Welcome to Team 3's presentation of Kranzberg's Laws of Technology. Melvin Kranzberg was a professor for over 30 years of his life and through his tenure he developed his Laws of Technology. Kranzberg's Laws of technology states six different points and those range from generalizations to specific statements that make up his laws of technology. Kranzberg's first law of technology is that technology is neither good nor bad nor is it neutral. Technology has been responsible for many improvements in society such as improvements in efficiency, and in communication. Technology has also had many negative impacts on society, such as privacy and piracy risk. Technology cannot be considered to be neutral because there are many reasons why technology can be considered as positive and many reasons why technology can be considered negative. And it is impossible to determine which side is more powerful because there are many different perspectives to the way you can look at this argument. Our first example is social networking. Social networking includes sites such as Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. There are many positive aspects to social networking. These sites allow us to keep in touch with people who we normally wouldn't be able to talk to, so people I went to high school with, former employers, it's also a new way to communicate. There are so many different sites and so many different ways to message and chat with people that it's just nice to have this many means of communication. And it also makes sharing information a lot easier. On Facebook I can post a video or an article that I think is funny, um, which is something that didn't exist in the past. But there are also many negative aspects to social networking, particularly a lot of privacy. On Facebook, there's all this information that that sites know about you so that they can customize ads and it's just not an issue that we had in the past. And there's also employment risk. Since we're about to graduate and we're in college, sometimes you have pictures of situations you regret or you said something that might have been inappropriate and with Facebook's timeline feature, people have access to all of these previous posts and if you said something that might have been inappropriate, it could cost you a job and that's an issue that didn't exist before social networking. Our second example is mobile phones. Mobile phones are great because they give people access to information they, that they didn't have in the past and it's really easy. So. I can download files off of Dropbox to my phone, I can look at my schedule, and I can do this all while walking down the street. Um, it also has tools for navigation, so I can find places when I'm on the go and find the nearest HEB. And there are also productivity tools, so I like using task management software and um, anything that helps me keep track of what I need to do. But there are also negatives to have mobile phones. For one, you have to pay for data plans, you have to upgrade whenever the new iPhone comes out, and it's just a lot of money spent on something that's relatively new. And also, there's risks of people spending their attention looking at their phones while driving, so changing your Pandora station or sending a text message while driving leads to accidents that wouldn't have happened in the past if we had more simple phones. Kranzberg's next law is invention is the mother of necessity. Inventions are created in order to solve problems. Computers were created to automate tasks that humans were bad at, like tabulating ballots and running Excel data sheets. Technology solves issues that people currently have. Cloud computing is another example. Cloud computing is storing information and programs at 
servers that are not located near your, where your device is. So cloud computing came out of came about because internet speeds got fast enough to where you could do interesting things on servers that weren't close by. So when internet got faster, we could stream music, we could stream movies, and use applications that existed only in the internet. Kranzberg's third law of technology states that technology comes in big and small packages. Two main points of this law is that big and small technologies refer to revolutionary and evolutionary technologies. Another point to be made is that small technologies can refer to subsystems that when put together create a system or a big technology. Revolutionary technologies refer to big technologies that redefine a function of society. The internet and mobile devices are two primary examples of this law. The internet has redefined information transfer, communication, and social networking. Mobile devices have redefined the access points of the internet to society. Evolutionary technologies refer to small technologies that enhance a function of society. Shazam and Evernote are two examples of this law. Shazam has enhanced the identifying and buying process of a song. Evernote has enhanced the note-taking process. Microsoft Office is a great example of subsystems coming together to create a system. Microsoft Word alone could not fill all the needs of a user, but Microsoft Office can. My opinion on Kranzberg's third law of technology, which states that technology comes in big and small packages, is that the initial statement is a little broad. But when you redefine big technologies as evolutionary technologies, which change the actual functions of society, and small technologies as evolutionary technologies which enhance certain functions of society, the theory can make a little more sense and is a little more redefined to me. Kranzberg's fourth law states that technology is a prime element in many public issues but technology is never focused on to make technology policy decisions. Non-technical factors like politics usually take precedence in policy decisions. Sarbanes-Oxley is a primary example of this law. Enterprise risk management systems are used by organizations to comply with this law. Yet Sarbanes-Oxley sets rules in place that enterprise risk management systems have to conform to. In other words, the law is not written with ERMs in mind. My opinion on Kranzberg's fourth law of technology which states although technology factors might be a major element in an issue, Usually, non-technical factors take precedence in policy changes of these issues. There's a couple reasons for this. First, I think policy changes defer to something that's more stable like political factors, which rate of change isn't as great as the rate of change of technology. The rate of change of technology is hard for policies to keep up with, so that's why I think that technology factors get deferred and non-technical factors take precedence. Kranzberg's fifth law states that although history is important, the history of technology is the most important because of the contributions it has made to mankind. Although historians might write highly of the importance of historical understandings by civilized people, many of today's students simply do not see the relevance of history to the present or to their future. This is because most of history as it is currently taught ignores the technological element. In 1875, the telephone was invented. 
The telephone is an instrument that converts voice and sound signals into electrical impulses for transmission by wire to a different location where another telephone receives the electrical impulses and turns them back into recognizable sounds. Contrary to popular belief, Thomas Edison didn't in invent the light bulb, but rather he improved upon an existing idea. In 1809, an English chemist named Humphrey Davy invented the first electric light. In 1878, Sir Joseph Wilson Swan, an English physicist, was the first person to invent a practical and longer lasting light bulb with a carbon fiber filament which lasted for about 13 hours. In 1879, Thomas Edison invented a carbon filament that burned for 40 hours. After many years of preparation, on a cold and windy day in 1903, Orville Wright flew the first powered heavier than air airplane propelling himself and his brother Wilbur into world history. In 1814, the first photographic image with a camera obscura was invented. However, the image required eight hours of light exposure and later faded. 23 years later, in 1837, the practical process of photography was introduced. There are many major milestones in the history of computers, starting with 1936 when Conrad Zeus built the first freely programmable computer. In 1884, Paul Nipkow sent images over wires using a rotating metal disk te technology with 18 lines of resolution. Television then evolved along two paths, mechanical based on Nipkow's rotating disk and electronic based on the cathode ray tube. Herb's fifth law states that all history is relevant, but the history of technology is the most relevant. My opinion is yes, technology is important, but I don't believe it's the most important. I think they're all equally important. For example, we probably wouldn't have the same forms of communication we would have today if, if certain technologies weren't invented. Likewise, I believe we wouldn't have the same rights we have today if certain historical events didn't happen. So that's why I think they're both equal. Kranzberg is trying to make a point that we often believe that technology is independent of any human element, but this is far from the truth. Technology is completely dependent on humans because technology is nothing more than a tool to serve our will. Technology itself is, a, is useless without the human element. Each of the inventions in the previous law exists because of humans. Without their intellect and research and development, we would not have the tools we have today. A few of these are Alexander Graham Bell, Thomas Edison, and the Wright brothers. Kranzberg believes that most of society thinks that technology is completely independent of human um, elements. But this is definitely not true because in order for technology to technology to exist, you had to have humans there to create it.